Hello everybody, welcome back to KDP A to Z, where I am taking you through the steps to make a passive income online through self-publishing with Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Now today I want to talk to you about keywords. If you get these right, your book will sell. If you get them wrong, no one will even see your book, let alone get you a sale. Um, so today I want to be showing you a few free ways that you can use to get these right. Now there are some extra plug-in bits, sometimes you can pay a little bit extra for, for bits and bobs, but all of these that I'm showing you today I have used completely for free, they've been successful for me, and I want to share those with you. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we go on to publishing our book, um, we are met with, on this first page, filling in the seven search keywords that describe your book and putting um, some information in here that will help people find your book. But one of the questions that I always had was, do you cram keywords or not? And by that, I mean, do you fill it up with every single word that you can think of? And will somebody be able to find your book if they use a combination? So for example, if someone was searching and I'd put in these particular keywords, if someone was searching Kakuru for teenagers, would my book come up in the results? because it's a combination of different keywords. Now, the answer to this is yes. Um, so if someone was to put in mixed word searches for teenagers, that my book would come up, but it will affect your ranking. Um, so it's less likely to appear at the top of the page because these keywords do tend to confuse them if you fill it up too much, um, especially if they are various and different. So if you are going to be considering cramming, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're in quite a niche market. Um, so if it's a competitive niche, um, such as dot to dot or something like that, try to be a little bit more specific with your keywords. And you'd want to be going for the ones that people are more likely to be searching for. So, um, so yes, if you've got a great niche and it is very specific, then definitely cram your keywords. But otherwise, try to be a bit more specific. And I'm going to be trying to show you how to get that information. Now, the first place I would like to start with is Amazon. So we've gone along here to Amazon.com. And all I want you to do is to be starting to search your actual niche in this search bar. So keep it on all, don't select books because most people when they're searching for things go on to all. So for example, let's type in dot to dot. Okay. Now what happens is this list comes down here. And because people are lazy and can't be bothered to type things out, what's most likely to happen is that when someone is searching for a dot to dot book, they will select one of these options. So what I would do is I would make sure you're writing down these, these specific keywords as your keywords. So if you've got a book, dot to dot book, and you think, oh, it's about for seven-year-olds, make sure that you're putting as your keyword dot to dot books for kids age four to eight. Because what's going to happen is they're not going to be searching for a seven-year-old. They can't be bothered to type all of that information in. They will just click on something like that. And hopefully your book will then come up in those results. Now I'd like to show you a more specific free tool that I have found that is very effective. Um, and I have just turned it on. So if we're going to go and type in dot to dot, now that I've turned on this tool, let's see what happens. So this is what happens. So these will be the primary ones and these are the ones that come up like I just showed you earlier on about the lists that people would mo most likely click on. And then here we are, some different Amazon suggestions. Now, this is the sort of thing I mean that you might want to add when you're cramming. So it might be thinking, oh, there is a maze in my dot to dot book, or um, yeah, they do have over a thousand dots in them. I must make sure I put that in as a keyword. So this is just some good information if you do want to cram your keywords because you have a very specific niche, then this would be some good ideas. Now, the way to find this little Chrome extension that I've got on here, I want to show you where to find it. So 
you will have to go on to your Google and I would like you to search self publishing titans. And it's this one, guys. Okay. So it's a free tool. Okay. So this is the one you want to go on Amazon Keyword Suggestion Expander and go on to install it. Now, you can see I've already got it, but this would come up with download to Chrome here. Just click on that. It's completely free to use. And then you turn it on in your... Um, suggestion bar up here um, so you can have it pinned to the toolbar up the top there completely free but that tool there does this okay and it is completely free to use and it will help you find extra keywords that you might not have thought of so when you've got all those write them all down write down the ones that you think that might work okay and then we're going to be, be being a little bit more specific Now, the next one that I want to show you is Google Keyword Planner. Um, I know it's Google, not specifically, not Amazon, but it will help give you some good information on here. And it's a completely free tool that is in Google Ads. Um, now, I know you're saying that Google Ads isn't free, but the good thing about Google Ads is that you actually don't have to run any ads and you can still use the tool. So I have never paid a penny um on this and i use it quite a lot um so it is a good way of doing it now if you don't have a google account you need to go and set one up um you only need an email for that okay so if you're not sure where to go type in google keyword planner okay and it's this one here and all you need to do is start sign in whatever so if you've got a google account already you just need to sign in and otherwise you just set up an account it's very simple to do and it is free i have never paid a penny on this okay but what you the way to use this search tool is let's just go on selecting discover new keywords okay so say we have a maths workbook Let's click on that, okay? So that gets, on Google, between 100 and 1,000 searches per month. Now, bear in mind, that is just a Google search specifically. But if we go up to here and you look at the Google, broaden your, your search, let's click on something like classroom resources. Let's remove that. Let's get the results for that. So there's some other ideas here that you might not have thought of as keywords. So classroom resources, when you've got a maths workbook, might be the thing that you want to be looking at. Also over here, you can refine the keywords quite nicely. So um, if we're looking at, say, let's go to resources. So you can narrow down your search quite nicely. So this might be some, not something related to classroom posters. So let's remove that one. Um, it's not really a, a classroom display. So let's just remove that one, okay? So then this is giving you much more information here that you might find useful in your uh, keywords. So this is a great way of getting new ideas, but it also shows you not only how many average monthly searches there are, but whether there's a different competition. Classroom Tools has a similar amount of searches as the Classroom Resources, <clears throat> but the competition is much lower. So it might be well be worth having a look on here and seeing what you might be more successful with in your keyword search. So yeah, this is one that I found that is absolutely fantastic. Um, keyword finder um, because it does give you this average monthly search results and I think you can pretty much safely say that if it's been searched for on Google it's going to get searched on Amazon so this is probably the only way that will give you a good guide of how many searches you're going to get so if we type in say Sudoku for example that's getting a hundred 
thousand to a million searches every month and the competition is low. So that's a maybe going to be a good one that will will get you better results. So if you're going to be more specific, um, say, so you don't have such a good niche and we want to be more specific, Sudoku might be a better one to put in to your search, res um, to your keywords and say puzzles. Um, so if we look at puzzles, for example, that's got only 10,000 to 100,000 results, um, search results and it's got high competition. So if you, this is what I mean by being much more specific in your keywords. So maybe don't bother putting in puzzles, put in Sudoku, because if someone's going to be looking for Sudoku, they're going to type that in. They might type in puzzles as well, but they're going to definitely be typing in Sudoku and you're much more likely to get top of the search results than if you cram your keywords and put put in ones that you don't need. So for here, um, it might well be worth if you've got something like a puzzles book or whatever else, but it is just specifically on Sudoku. Then it's much better to have less keywords in here, put it in more often if you want to, um, but then you're more likely to rank higher on the results if someone is actually just looking for Sudoku instead, okay? Now, the other one that I want to show you, it's not exactly free. Um, you can get a paid version of it, but it might give you some good ideas. Um, so let's go with Sudoku again. It's this keyword Amazon tool that they have. So have a little look, keywordtool.io forward slash Amazon hashtag suggestions. Put that into your, um, your search bar at the top there. Okay, so... Let me just show you what comes up with this. So you can select um, the country that you're in, um, the language and so on. Um, but let's just search for Sudoku. Okay. Now, what happens is this comes up. So this is actually telling you real results that are being found on Amazon. Um, so people are searching this. Um, Per month, they are searching it 59, sorry, 595,000 times, okay? Uh, that's roughly how much it would cost you for click per, um, if you were doing your advertising on it. Don't worry about that bit. Um, but people are looking for Sudoku books for adults only 150 times. Um, so, again, if you've got just a Sudoku book, just put that in as your keyword. That's the, you know, that's what all you need to do. Be specific if it's a, a competitive sort of niche that you're going in. Okay. But then also it tells you other suggested keywords that you might want to look at. Now, this is only going to give you a couple of results for free. You can upgrade it. I haven't bothered, but you can do um, if you want to um, to find out the information for these bits and pieces, which are all covered up. But honestly, I haven't bothered. I have just used this occasionally to, if I'm being specific and I'm looking at it, um, you know, thinking about something, I will just go and look for the actual word that I want just to confirm my thoughts really. Now we've talked about filling up these uh, seven keyword boxes, um, but actually the most important place to put your keyword is in fact in the book title. Now you will notice that you cannot change your title after it's been published, okay? So make sure you get that right first. If you are publishing a book and you've decided that your keyword, your main keyword is Sudoku, and that's the one you want to go with, make sure it's in the book title make sure it's the only one in your book title as well because if that's the one that you've definitely decided is going to work um then put that as your book title and don't confuse amazon by putting in loads of keywords again in your um in your book title unless like i said it's a very specific niche but if it is so competitive make sure it is just a couple of words and um, that is the most important thing to do so that you are when someone is typing in Sudoku, and they will, 595,000 people have typed in Sudoku, yours is much more likely to come to the top of the page, okay? The subtitle is also important for ranking. So that 
title and subtitle are way more important in getting Amazon uses them first above these seven keywords boxes. Okay, this helps, and this is the only thing you can change after you've published, but it's much more important to get them as your title. Now, we'll be doing some other videos around getting a great title, finding better niches and so on. So if you are enjoying this video, please make sure you subscribe and press the notifications bell so that you can get the results as soon as I've published the next videos. Now, the next tool that I want to share with you is one that's called Keywords Everywhere. So have a look on that. Now, just be careful when you're looking on these um, because that will come up with different things which are sponsored. Um, but it's actually this one. Okay. Now, this is quite a useful one. So do install it if you want to. Um, I already have. Now, that it is sort of free um, and you get an API key which will give you some credits and so on. Um, it's not expensive, to be honest. It's like £10, I think it is, um, to get loads of credits that should last you a long time. Um, but to be honest, I haven't paid for it. Um, but what happens is when you are searching for something, it'll come up here. So let's search for, say, Sudoku in Google. If you look a little bit further down, it'll tell you some keyword suggestions. So this is, again, I haven't paid anything. I think I've run out of credits ages ago. Um, and it will load the metrics. Um, so if you want to use your credits, and it will tell you the search volumes for those keywords again. Um, so it might just well be worth having a little look at that, it might give you some good ideas for some different keywords. Okay. So I hope you found that useful. I just want to summarize what we've gone through today uh, very quickly. So there are four main tools that I would definitely recommend. Um, one of them being this, uh, the main one being this Amazon search suggestion expander, which is supplied by Titan self publishing. Um, so have a little look for that one. Keywords everywhere is another one that's that you can pay extra for. Um, but the, my favorite one is the Google Ads Keyword Finder. Um, that is the one that I would always recommend you looking at because this will give you so many search results. And like I said, it has not cost me a penny um, to do um, because I don't run ads on Google, um, but I can still find this information. And then the other one, if you're wanting more specific information, looking at Amazon, is this keyword tool. Um, now, I'm, I've specifically selected Amazon, um, but you can use it for other th areas as well. So if you're marketing, say, on Pinterest, it might be useful to stick, um, stick the keyword in there. Remember as well um, the importance of cram if it is a great niche, you know, really niche down, then do cram your keywords into these boxes. Um, but if it's not, if it's not a very specific niche, you know, it's something more like general dot to dot, just don't cram here because what will happen is you'll confuse the algorithm on Amazon and it will just rank you really low. I hope you found this video useful. Please don't forget to subscribe. Um, to my channel. It will really help me make more videos like this um, and click the notifications bell for when I do more videos 